Hey guys, Gruz here, and today I'm starting a new series where I'm going to give you guys a bunch of game recommendations. This will be a very straightforward video. I'll move through a bunch of games, talk a bit about each of them and what I like about them. In this video, it's all about black and white one-bit games for compact Macs. Most of these games I'm going to talk about will probably run on newer Macs, but really they're meant for machines like the Mac Plus, SE, and Mac Classic. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these types of videos in the future. I'd love to hear from you. My first recommendation is an interesting game called Lunar Rescue. This one has a pretty interesting concept. It takes place on a moon somewhere in outer space, and there's this defense system all across the moon that's been sabotaged and now fires on friendly ships. The defense system is operated by a system called the Independent Computerized Ecosystem, or ICE, which was controlled by five crystals which were stolen by raiders and hidden in the canyons. Since the defense system shoots down friendly ships, all of the 26 cities on the moon are now in need of supplies. So it's your job to go from city to city, buying and selling supplies to make a profit. Along the way, you'll have to battle the defense artillery with the ultimate goal of finding all five crystals so that you can reinstall them in ice, fix the defense system, and restore order to the moon. This game has such a professional presentation. It runs so very smooth, and the graphics are absolutely fantastic. It was worked on by Mike Sines, who is a comic book artist and has worked on other Mac games like Creepy Castle and, yep, Mac Playmate. There is a lot to this game Lunar Rescue. If you want to check it out, I recommend grabbing the zip file that includes the manual, because you're probably going to want to read through that before making a serious attempt at this game. This one is amazing, and I highly recommend it. The next game I recommend is one that's a bit different than the stuff I normally talk about on this channel. This is an adaption of the board game Othello. Only here, it's called This Ain't Othello, or Tau for short. If you've never played it before, you and the computer will take turns putting down your colored circle. And if you surround the computer's circles on both sides with your own color, then you get to flip all of their colors in the row to your own. The goal is to try and take as many pieces on the board as you can, and at the end of the game, the person with the most pieces wins. I think there are other versions of this game for Compact Max, but this is the one that I always played. It's got very smooth animation, lots of options, a very challenging but fair CPU opponent, as well as a witty attitude that's kind of funny. The next game I recommend today is called Feathers in Space. In this game, you're on a planet named Zonar, where strange bird-like creatures are invading, trying to destroy your space station and carry away your men. You control a ship here which has three different attacks. You can do your basic attack by clicking to shoot upwards. You can hit space bar to drop a bomb on the ones below. Or hit enter to launch a smart bomb that seeks out and destroys all the birds on the screen. But it doesn't give you any points. There's an interesting movement to control the aiming of your shots here. By moving the mouse left, it will rock the cannon to the left. And moving it right will move it to the right. This one's a bit tricky to master. But I really find it to be intuitive. And a lot more fun than just aiming straight up. The enemies will come in waves, swooping down to grab your guys inside the station and trying to fly off with them. If you shoot a bird, you've got to watch out for its falling body, which here looks like a cooked turkey. If you touch those, though, you'll lose a life. You also want to make sure that if you shoot a bird while he's taken off with one of your guys, he'll drop the guy in the air, so you have to go and catch him and lower him to the ground, otherwise he'll die. This is a very early shooter created by PBI Software in 1985. It was very impressive for the time period it came out, and I still think it's a lot of fun to play. The next game is an absolute classic for the early Mac. This one is called Mac Bugs. This was released by Michael Owe back in 1985, for the good of all Mac kind. This is a very fast-paced and difficult shooter, which in some ways resembles the classic arcade game Centipede. There's all sorts of computers and peripherals flying around the screen, and the goal here is to avoid touching any of it and just blast everything. The main computers here are compact Macs, which move in a straight line and will only turn when they hit something. The main objective of the game is to clear the screen of all the compact Macs, and once you do, you'll finish the level. Among the bad guys are little computer mice and apple symbols that you can shoot for bonus points. There are also little Mac Lisas or XLs that will pop up out of nowhere and paint the screen with these asterisk type things that will block your path and restrict your movement. You've got to shoot the asterisk things a few times to get rid of them so they can get troublesome. 
It may seem like this game is named after the popular classic Mac debugger called Max Bug, but I'm not so sure that was intentional. See, Mac Bugs was released as a free game as part of a C development package called the DSmith slash OAC compiler. I'm guessing the source code was included as part of the package. It hasn't surfaced as far as I know, but here's the thing. The PC version of the DSmith package includes the source for a game by the same author, Michael Owe, created for DOS, and the game is just called Bugs. Bugs is an interesting text mode centipede clone created back in 1982, which was three years before Mac Bugs. I'm guessing the author just created a somewhat similar concept on the Mac and titled it Mac Bugs to differentiate it from the PC version. It's a fun and simple little game that was all over the Mac back then. I grew up with this one and I still really enjoy it. My last recommendation today is a very fun game called Continuum. In this game, you fly a ship around, taking out all of the enemy guns and bunkers to complete each stage. You'll have to watch out though because one single hit in this game will cause your ship to explode. You'll also have to watch out for hazards, such as walls, where they sometimes will kill you. There's also varying levels of gravity, where on some planets it will be stronger or have machines that affect gravity and will pull you in different directions. It's pretty interesting. This one seems inspired by the arcade classic Gravitar, but the production here is top notch for Compact Max. This game feels like a commercial project because it is, or it was meant to be anyways. The creators had some trouble with the publisher Broderbund, so they ended up releasing it as freeware, or half-jokingly beerware, where they asked you to send in some beer as payment. This is a very impressive game for the time, and I highly recommend checking this one out. And there we have it. Those are some of my recommendations of games for Compact Max. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it to let me know. I probably will be doing more videos like this in the future, so make sure to subscribe for more. I would love to hear your thoughts on these games, and if you've got any recommendations of other Compact Mac games, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks for your time today, guys. Take care.